Welcome back to the Dividend Diplomats YouTube channel. Everyone. You got Lanny, Bert, you know us. We're the Dividend Diplomats. We are coming to your YouTube feed with a very, very exciting stock comparison today. Smash that subscribe button. Give Bert and Hurt and Lanny a thumbs up because we're trying to reach out to the millions and millions of dividend investors out there. And we can't wait to talk to you about this dividend stock analysis showdown between what, Bert? It's between America's favorite sector. Are we talking technology, Lanny? No. Are we talking coins? No. Are we talking consumer staples, our favorite? Uh, no. Then what are we talking about, Lanny? What Big sector? Big banks, baby. Oh. We heard you guys loud and clear. We wanted to bring it to the YouTube video. We're gonna talk to you about the top three US banks here publicly traded. You know, everybody was leaving some comments. We had a great one that's, you know, we had a little feedback back and forth and he was like, please do a stock analysis on some of the banks. Maybe it was JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, those names. Um, so we decided, you know what, let's do a little bank analysis right now. But taking that list, instead of Wells Fargo, they're in too much trouble right now. We don't want them at the moment. You know who we're gonna sop in for them in that third spot of this analysis? Who's that be? Citigroup. So in this analysis, we're gonna talk JP Morgan, ticker symbol JPM, Bank of America, ticker symbol BAC, and Citigroup, again, ticker symbol C. So when we go through reviewing these three big banks, which obviously have benefited tremendously from COVID-19, got the economic stimulus, which is flowing deposits into the banks, even though they don't have as much investments with those deposits, uh, you know, they obviously benefit from the SBA lending programs. And then on top of that, obviously they attract probably the most consumers across the nation, which is why they are the three biggest banks. The three amigos as they call them. Three musketeers. Now, before we dive in, we wanted to talk to you that we're gonna evaluate them through the Dividend Diplomat stock screener, which is focused on three metrics. B, hit them with the metrics. P ratio less than the S&P 500, payout ratio less than 60%, and a history of increasing dividends. The video that's shown right above here will give you a deep dive into our stock screener if you wanna learn more and see how to use it. Now, we're gonna add in the dividend yield as that bonus metric, but as this extra metric related to banking, we will briefly talk about the price to book ratio, and that is really the share price over the book value. And that's what's unique about the banking sector. That's why we need to throw it in there. When you're evaluating valuations for banks, you use that price to book ratio. A lot of times when you see acquisitions in the banking sector, the question is what was the price to book that the, ba the selling bank was able to get? And you know, you really like a bank that's to be honest, below 1.25 is what I like to look for. I don't know what's your favorite threshold No, is. that's usually what we use, especially when we're investing in a lot of the, the smaller banks too. We look for those low price to book banks below 1.25. That's a great that's a great entrance point, and Lanny. And this is really a nice valuation metric when it comes to banking. All right, so we're gonna jump in, talk to you about the three stocks. We're gonna go through the three, we're gonna go through the metrics about each stock's metric. Mm -hmm. Exactly, so let's jump right into this first one, price to earnings ratio. We'll come to the price to book later. We're gonna look at both valuation metrics here. We didn't wanna just say we're gonna, you look at price to book and then be like, yeah, we're gonna throw this metric to you. Both are important. So jumping in, all prices in this video are as of June 11th close. So let's keep that in mind. Let's go first, JP Morgan, Jamie Dimon. Let's start this out. Their price was 160.29. Divide that by the forward earnings of 13.14. Gives you a PE ratio of 12.20. Lanny, Not what about bad. BAC? Bank of America. Bert owns Bank of America, one of his legacy stocks. Yeah, my grandma actually bought this stock for me when I was in my like seventh or eighth grade. And I just, I will never sell this company. It's always gonna have a spot in my portfolio. And it, it was down for a while because she got it pre-financial crisis, but it is coming back and roaring. It is in a very green position right now. So Bank of America trading at $41.86 on forward earnings expectations of $3.05, price to earnings ratio higher than JP Morgan at 13.72. That's very interesting. The and third one, city. let's go city. Price, 76.48, forward earnings, 906, PE ratio, 8.44x, so wow, they are the cheapest of the three. City, holding it down. They got the new credit card coming out, 5% cash back, Bert hmm. was just talking about interesting, it. Interesting, interesting. I am in the market for a new credit card, potentially, so we'll see. 
But yeah, just to summarize here, JP Morgan, 12.2, Bank of America, 13.7, Citigroup by far the leader of this metric at 8.4. You wanna start with the payout ratio? We're gonna go into the second dividend stock metric, the dividend payout ratio. We've said it many times, the perfect payout ratio we think is that 40 to 60% range. All these banks you're gonna see are very low on the payout ratio. That's because during the pandemic, earnings stayed strong and they're even stronger now in 2021. They weren't able to do dividend increases or share buybacks during the pandemic, but the seatbelt's off, baby. So the dividend per year for JP Morgan is $3.60. Therefore, taking that over the expected earnings right now equals a payout ratio of only 27%. Man, Bank of America, 72 cent annual dividend. That gives you a payout ratio when considering the forward earnings of 23.61. Wow. What about Citi? Let's see. To round up with Citi, Citi Group here, they pay an annual dividend of $2.04. Taking that over those forward earnings, their payout ratio, yes, is also the lowest, similar to the price to earnings ratio. The payout ratio for Citi is only 22.5%. Wow, you weren't kidding. They all are in a nice little 5% range of each other, well below our perfect payout ratio, so they easily have room to grow that dividend yeah. going forward. Yeah, I was just about to say, so Bert already just said it right there. Because the payout ratio is so low, there is still plenty of room to grow the dividend. This also means that there's a lot of safety in the dividend, and which is why you know the rules have been uplifted for them to continue to increase and do the share buybacks. Exactly. Now, before we go into this third metric, there's one thing we want to caution. You are probably going to see some large percentages from the dividend growth, but we have to remember dividends for large banks and banks in general were restricted for a very long time after the financial crisis. So similar to how the seatbelt was taken off with the pandemic and you saw large dividend increases, imagine having seven years of a lot of capital built up, not being able to pay out a dividend, and then the Fed saying you can start paying dividends again. So so just keep that in mind as we start talking about these average dividend growth The third rates. dividend metric right now, the growth. Well, talk to me about JP Morgan. Yeah, their five-year average dividend growth rate is 32%. So, wow. How many years? Yeah, well, they've increased for 10 years. So yeah, even though they were increasing, there were very small increases until they were allowed to just juice that dividend up. Juicing it up, squeezing the pulp. Going into Bank of America right now, that dividend growth rate on the five years is 11.77 percent and they've been hitting it hard now for seven years yeah and citigroup is a 74 percent five-year average dividend growth rate and they've been increasing it for six years so let's recap that jp morgan 32 percent increase for 10 years bank of america 11.7 percent for seven consecutive years seven I know how to hold up the number seven, everybody. Sorry about that. Citigroup, 74% for six years. Told you those were some large percentages. Large dividend increases. You know, I don't anticipate them having it that large right now. Yeah, City, City's gonna have uh, some issues if th that payout ratio if they keep announcing 74% dividend but increases. But when they do resume, you know, resume the dividend increases, hopefully this year, we should see a nice double digit increases going forward for shareholders. Exactly, let's move into that bonus metric. The dividend yield, JP Morgan's yield is 2.25%. What about back? Bank of America, again, ticker symbol BAC, their dividend yield is actually the lowest on the scoreboard here at 1.72%. And City? 2.67%, so there we interesting. go. Interesting, yeah, City, City's interesting. City. So City's got the lowest Pay payout ratio. Lowest PE ratio. And the highest yield. And the highest dividend growth rate, because how many companies are gonna beat that 74% hmm. dividend growth rate? Well, let's talk about that final metric that we talked about. Price to book, price so price everyone book. remember, Here's what we're shooting for, 1.25x or lower for the price to book ratio. That is the sweet spot for us and what we like to see. JP Morgan, their price to book is actually much higher than that. It is 1.95x. So in the banking sector, JP Morgan has a very expensive multiple compared to a lot of its peers. And Bank of America, better than JP Morgan at 1.44 times book. So slightly higher on the valuation mark on the price to book ratio, which makes sense though, because, you know, I mean, higher in, than the 1.25 because the price to earnings is also slightly higher. Yeah, and last, but definitely, definitely, definitely not least, well, technically least, Citigroup's price to book is 0.87. Uh-oh. Their share price is below the book value of the bank. And the book value is taking the equity, the shareholder's equity, and divided that by all the common shares that are outstanding. So you are saying that your current share price is less than the equity of the bank. Insane. 
So keep that in mind, and we would say that's a great sign of undervaluation. So in summary right now, Citigroup dominates all of them. Yeah, I could look at this list. It's not even close to Citigroup. I can just knock Bank of America right out. They have the highest PE ratio, um, the lowest dividend yield, and a price to book above the 1.25 we look at. I'm just taking them and throwing them out of this analysis. And then JP Morgan has just had a really big price surge you know, through the pandemic. I remember looking at them back when they were around 90 a share, so again, almost two times the share price now. Yeah, I never want to eliminate JP Morgan. I would love to just follow them, see what their price is doing, but your conclusion's right, Lanny. Citigroup is insane. Citigroup. Does that mean they're going to get added to one of our watch lists in the future? It could be a stock to buy. could be a stock to add to the watch list. Um, currently, I don't own any of the three. I just own Bank of America because my grandma got it for me a long time ago, but I don't have yeah. I don't have a position in there. I position in other smaller I got, banks. I got gypped. The only thing I know how to make is a, a sauce for the pasta. It's Man. very valuable, too, though. It is. You can't put a price on that. Well, how many banks do you own? Do you own some of the bigs? Maybe they're not the top three, but do you own some of the top 10 banks? You know, I know I, we own a lot of Key Corp, ticker symbol Key, and I think you own Huntington. I do own Huntington. I don't have a lot. I got them right after they announced a massive acquisition and their price just popped, so I missed out. But also check the portfolios on our website. We'll put a link to there. You can see a lot of the other smaller community banks that we own too. We love because the community we, banks. We love the banking sector. It's our background. It's our specialty. It's so, the bread and butter. Yeah, if you have any questions about evaluating banks too, put them in the comment section. We're happy to provide more insight on what to, you can look for. Again, if you haven't already, give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel. You know, let us know what more you want to see from us, what more value we can provide you. If you want to learn how to make tomato sauce from Lanny. I got you covered. I'll yeah. make a hell of a sauce. You know, I mean, I could put my nun of Gina's face right there in the jar. Oh. Yeah, I like it. Hmm. That was Bertha Hurt and Lanny from the Dividend Diplomats. Over, Over and out. out.